going on guys? We're getting back into it. And today's video is the economy is very, very bad. And this has created the cult of passive income. If you're on YouTube, you have seen a ton of videos talking about passive income in multiple income streams. And let's go ahead and take the second thing. At most of my entrepreneur life, the most income or revenue streams I've had have been two to three. Two to three that have been consistent and maintainable. One of the things that you would hear is the average millionaire has seven income streams. And I'm trying to think, what would these income streams be? Active income, passive income, rental income, investment income. Once you start to really dive into this, it's kind of hard to figure out what could one individual do that could create seven income streams. Now, one of the things now, if you were to start a holding company, kind of like me and create multiple companies, because right now I'm kind of in a holding pattern, but when everything is optimized, I have my course creation company. That's my largest uh, income stream. Then my second largest income stream is my consulting company. Then my third largest income stream is my YouTube revenue. And once you get past two or three, cause like, here's the thing to start seven companies that all make money is doable. It's possible. And it's damn hard. It's damn hard. And I'm always seeing these people who are like, I have seven, I have eight income streams. And one of the things that always gets me, and this is something you should start looking at. This is what I look at. When you go to CNBC and you see them interviewing Kevin Leary or Grant Cardone or Ray Dalio, they always have their interview from a nice office or a nice apartment or a nice house. Now, these people who have these multiple income streams, um, they don't. I remember for the longest time, and this was a running joke for me on YouTube, that you would have these guys who would do these YouTube ads from what you could tell was an extremely small apartment talking about you can make millions of dollars, yet they're living like, they're, li they're not living better than you. They're living a substandard life and they're just sitting there like, huh? So right now the economy is bad and we're entering into a space where the scammers and the um, charlatans are, they're, they're about to come for you. They're, they're about to come for you. And I got a video on my other channel, Lending Cameron School, which you should watch right after watching this video and the link will be below because I explain some stuff that a lot of people don't even consider. But one of the things that I, I am really trying to figure out is how someone who is 20 years old, didn't go to college, has somehow created seven, eight or 10 revenue streams and has time to travel the world. And they've done this in two years. Like, give you an example. Omni and the Hellcat. He created Gears TV. He created this app and he was selling pirated cable content and he was making millions. He was making millions. And then he had some real estate, which he was renting. And even with Omni, the, the Gears TV, the real estate and the youth, you know, and he was making millions. <clears throat> so even Omni, who bona fide proof positive was making millions 
and you like literally it's like I'm gonna buy a Lamborghini today or I'm gonna pay cash money he did not have seven eight nine ten revenue streams and I'm consistently seeing this and this is why I say the cult of passive income hear me and hear me out I feel that the term passive income is being ferreted around misappropriately. You know what is passive income? Dividend investments. You, you put some money in some dividend stock and every quarter they send you a check. That is passive income. Passive income means that you don't have to do nothing, nothing to get that money. So the majority of what these people are saying is passive income is not passive income at all. I feel that that term has been misappropriated and used erroneously. Now, there is making income that's not tied to your time, which many people mistakenly assume is passive income. And what do I mean? All right, let's say you develop an e-commerce website. You go ahead, develop the e-commerce website, and let's say you make a product. Let's say you're making, you're making pipes. Uh, what do they call them? These colorful pipes to smoke marijuana. You actually have created in your garage a manufacturing facility to create these pipes, okay? And you put up a website, you run some traffic to the website, and you're selling these pipes. So Monday through Friday, you're in the garage, you're making these beautiful pipes. And then you put them on your website, you take pictures, you run traffic to your website, and you sell these pipes. Because every Monday through Friday, you're in the garage, you're making these pipes. Let's say you make 25 pipes a day, you're making about, um, 125 pipes a week, which is 500 pipes a month, you're selling, and what you've done is you stocked up, so you have an inventory of 2,000 pipes, and you consistently sell about 1,000 pipes per month. Now, you're making your pipes, you're running your business, and guess what happens to anyone who has an e-commerce website? You go to work, you go home, then you're off. And between the hours of 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., your website, which is a digital employee, is taking orders and you wake up in the morning and you've got 10 orders. So you have made money while you were asleep. That is a real thing. It happens to anyone. When I started selling my online courses, it was a running joke, and I used to talk about it in the videos. The majority of my sales happened between 12 and 2 o'clock in the morning. Because I would look at the emails, and I was just like, what was going on at 12 and between 12 and 2? Because one morning I woke up, and I had did, and I remember this distinctly. This was the first time that I ever made $30,000 in one day. And I made $25,000 of that money between 12 and 4 a.m. in the morning. And I also realized that, because it's 12 and 4 a.m. here, it's not 12 and 4 a.m., but it's still late at night. And this, this was a running thing, that the majority of my orders happened in the middle of the night. And I was just like, what is going on? Because, you know, I was a curious person. It's just like, why is this happening? So you can set things up where you make money when you're not working. And that, that's one of the things about, that's why everyone needs a website, because the website is a digital employee. But it's not passive, because in the morning, you go through your emails, you print up your orders, you, then you got to pack up the pipes, then you got to slap a shipping label on them, then you got to take them to the post office, or if your stuff is snazzy, you got it where the post office comes to you every day and picks up the pipes and you, you've, you've got all the mailing and stuff, but it's less active because you have components and parts of your business that do not require you to be present to operate, but they do require you to be 
present to fulfill. So I saw a YouTube ad where the guy was talking about uh, zero cash financing and you could take this zero cash financing and get a car and put this car on Turo for passive income. And I started laughing because this person has clearly never operated a car on Turo or any rental car. So, uh, Turo ain't passive at all because even if you don't meet the people and you do remote pickups and drop-offs, you still got to go check out the car, take pictures. What? There, there's nothing passive about it. And I'm seeing that that's why I call it the cult of passive income because that, that term is a, it's a, it's a trigger. It's a triggering uh, keyword. It's like, oh, passive income. So you now have a whole bunch of people who mistakenly think that setting up systems and having components of your business that operate without you being present, that's passive income. And if I wasn't so honest, I could be lying. It's like, um, I will tell you that I did when I had my heart attack and I did not work, I had passive income. Uh, my websites were still making money. Money was still coming in and I wasn't doing nothing. I was doing absolutely nothing. But let's identify that. First of all, I built the YouTube channel. I built the audience. There was nothing passive about that because it took years. Let me say that again. It took years to do that. So on the front end, I was working a lot. I was building, I was marketing, I was creating content for years. And I have to keep saying that because there are many people, and you will see in the video that you will watch after this one, um, that there are people who are lying to you about you could create a business, you create a system and quit your job in 90 days. And once again, as a seasoned, successful entrepreneur who has made a lot of money, the process takes time. The process takes um, time, takes effort, uh, it takes seasoning, it takes work, because, you know, if I was less candid, I could be saying, hey, um, you know, this is what I did and you could do it too. Uh, there's a guy who I feel is very charismatic. He's a handsome young man. His name is Jordan Welch and he's put out some videos and see when I watch another YouTuber, I don't watch from a, I'm sitting at home and I'm just like trying to figure out how to make money. See, I already know how to make money. So I don't have to figure out how to make money. I already know how to make money. I know what it takes. I know what I have to do. I know what I have to set up to make money. I have a system, I have a process. So I don't need anyone on YouTube to teach me how to make money. So when I watch these videos, I'm watching them from the vantage point. Are they actually going to teach you how to make money? Since I already know how to make money. And the answer most of the time is no. Jordan was doing, and like, once again, I got a video on my other channel talking about this. Seven day and 30 day channel challenges are garbage. When I started the car rental business, you know what my original plan, if things had went well, my original plan was to do a year of running the business and taking the money that the business generated and reinvesting that in the cars and never actually putting my paws on the money. That was my plan before I knew that the car rental business was garbage and trash. So how are these people with no business experience, no sales experience, no marketing experience, no web building, no experience whatsoever, within 90 days they're going to go into this new business and make enough money to quit their job in 90 days. 
and develop some of this passive income. The times that I've had passive income, and there have been a few times I've talked about on the channel where I've had passive income, it always came after years of hard work on the front end. It never, I've never had a passive income source that I built in 90 days. It's always come after years of hard work and building something. And I'm gonna tell you something, this YouTube channel, if I were to stop making YouTube videos, I would have passive income for about two to six months. And then it would, in each month, it would become less and less to the point that I would not get a check from YouTube. So I have seen multiple times. Now there is a case study. There's a YouTube channel called Talking Kitty. The content creator of that YouTube channel committed suicide about a year ago. And he's created evergreen content. Now if you could create evergreen content, which continues to get views, then that would be a source of passive income because the content creator is dead and this channel still gets million of views per month. So it's getting AdSense revenue and sending it to his wife. So it is possible to create a YouTube channel in an evergreen niche that will make you a lot of money, whether you're producing videos or not. But for the average YouTuber, and I'm the average YouTuber, if I was to stop producing content, my passive income would go on for a few months and then it'd be nothing. It, this channel would die. This channel would die. So that would be the experience because you know uh, there are people talking about like how long can you take a break? And the majority of YouTubers who have channels, once they stop producing content, their channel starts winding down. It just starts winding down except for the case of Talking Kitty and probably a few other channels that I don't know about. But one of the things that you guys have got to understand, and the, because the economy is bad, you're going to see a remarkable number of ads and products and schemes designed to extract money out your pocket that are not gonna work because they're using the buzzword passive income, because I was watching this girl, Tiffany Ferg, and she has the video called The Code of Passive Income. And she was just going through, like, with wholesaling. Like, everyone talks about wholesaling. And this, this is one of the things that people don't take into consideration. Let's say there's a store going out of business and it has a liquidation store sale. And you go in, and that products that you normally had to pay 100 bucks, you can now get for 50 bucks. So you're buying up whatever you want. How often does it enter in your head, why is this store closing? It doesn't enter into your head that the person that closed the store may be filing bankruptcy. You don't even think about it. And this brings me to wholesaling. And I've had somewhat of an issue with wholesaling. I have a friend who does wholesaling and he had had to raise his marketing budget three times this year to keep making what he used to make because wholesaling is getting very difficult because people are he, he's finding out that people are becoming educated because see here's the thing you're watching youtube for these wholesaling videos right you think you're the only one watching youtube about these wholesaling videos Right now, there is someone who's watching a YouTube wholesaling video who's been bombarded. Maybe they're an out-of-state owner and they're like, wait a minute, they're trying to wholesale my house. Why well, don't I Everyone's trying to cut out the middleman. And what is the wholesaler? The wholesaler is the middleman. So a lot of people are becoming educated and wholesaling is getting harder and harder and harder. And you will never hear one of these guys who has a wholesaling course, who wholesaling channel, because see, nothing remains static. The consumer becomes educated every day. Like right now, and this is something that I, a lot of car people, if you sell cars, you know exactly what I'm talking about, that you will try to sell a car to someone who's been studying this car. They know this car better than you do because they've been studying this car for months. So you can't get over on them. 
And what's gonna happen with wholesaling is more people do this wholesaling and put this stuff out, more and more people are going to find it extremely challenging to do wholesaling. Now, I know someone who tried to flip houses, and this is a person who started off with $500,000 cash money, and it became a complete another shit show. Complete another shit show. So, people make this stuff seem to be um, simpler than it is. They make it seem to be easier than it is, and they use that buzzword passive income to induce you to pay attention even though the only form of true passive income is dividend stock number one and real estate rentals that you don't manage now i can give you a scenario where you could start a company and it's gonna take years to do this. This is not something that you're gonna do overnight. Or let's say you had a company, a 20 year old company, it's been making money, you have the resources, you could do this uh, within a few months. What you could do, is, and this is something that I walked one of my friends through who wanted to sell her company, and I said, don't sell, because her company is a cash cow. Her company was making money hand over fist. She weren't working that hard. She was making a lot of money. I was like, don't sell this you have a cash cow so what she did is she went in, she separated some of the money from the cash cow and she hired someone to replace her then once this girl she hired was a go-getter she was super sharp and she actually started came on at fifty thousand. and after the first year she realized that she was going to have to pay this girl a hundred a hundred thousand because the girl knew how much money the company was making so before this girl came on the girl the company was making five hundred thousand after this girl came on the company started doing a million so my friend who was making five hundred thousand running the company herself now had an additional four hundred thousand on top of that original five hundred thousand and didn't have to run the day-to-day -day operations of the business and that is a form of passive income she still had to meet with the girl periodically but she was able to take trips I remember she took a two month trip to Paris, then she came back, then she opened up a restaurant. So there is a way to turn a business into a semi form, because once again, you're still gonna have to do something. You're still gonna have to meet people, write checks, uh, be accountable for taxes. But I got a question for you. If you can make legitimately a million dollars a year and work 10 hours a week would you do it hell yeah hell yeah you do that. you do you do that all day long you do that five times on sunday oh hell yeah 10 hours a week million a year where do i sign up so because you're still working but you're not working that hard and you're not doing some shit you don't want to do so that's the goal because this whole notion of passive income and these YouTube ads are so, it's like, well, Dave, Dave likes to travel the world. And Dave is, was out of town 10 months and he made 50,000 a month. These are lies. These are lies. And they induce you using the buzzword of passive income. Uh, if I don't remind, Tiffany Berg, Tiffany Ferg, Tiffany Ferg, the cult of passive income. She does a very good job of breaking this down. Um, like I said, I have had true passive income, like after my heart attack, I had true passive income. But once again, what did it take for me to get to the point where I had true passive income? It took years and years of work. Like when I got the passive income from selling my first digital product, making money A to Z with self storage unit auctions. I spent 10 years acquiring that knowledge acquiring that ability to then turn that into intellectual property and once again you got people out there who are telling unseasoned once again these people are not stupid you're not stupid you're not dumb you're uneducated you don't know what you don't know and you're being spoon-fed this bullshit and you're spending your money and then 
Six months later, you're no better off than you were before you took the course. No better off. And this is one of the big issues that is happening um, with these people creating these using that buzzword because I've seen Pat like the guy with the 0% financing take this car, bought this car on Turo and create passive income. Putting it renting the car, being a landlord is not passive income. Especially when you get to 10, 15 rentals, that's a lot to manage. And you will have things that will go on. You will like, uh, I have a friend who has 20 rentals and they self-manage. They don't have a managed company because 10%, because I think their 20 rentals does like $35,000 a month. So that would have been 3,500 a month to a property rental company. And he was like, that's just too much. Because he said over a year, that's $40,000. He's like, I ain't doing nothing else. I will manage my rentals. And he manages all his rentals and he was real smart about it because he bought all of his rentals. All of his rentals are anywhere from five to 10, 10 miles apart from each other. They're all in the same neighborhood. So he doesn't have to go all around the world. He doesn't have property out of state. And what he's done, and he's bought um, a, a, another piece of property that he doesn't rent out, that ha, he, you know, um, he cuts the grass. He. You know, he goes by, he cuts the grass because all his rentals include lawn service, um, cleaning out the gutters. Because one of the things that he does, and he says that was the smartest thing he ever does, is he sees his properties frequently. So if something's off or a tenant's doing something crazy, because he actually had someone turn one of his properties into a meth lab and he caught it a week after they got started. And he went in and told them, hey, y'all need to stop this or I'm kicking you out. So he called the police, the police came in, they were cooking meth, they arrested them. Then he evicted them, he cleaned out the meth lab, painted the house, and that house was out of rental for about 30 days. So he lost one month's rent because he, he was able to see what was going on with his property. He's an active landlord and he told me, because you know we were having the conversation and he says, you know, Sometimes I kind of feel the way that you felt about the car rental business because, you know, at one point he had a group of tenants that he really didn't like. And, you know, and then as he, they left and he got better tenants, he tightened up his, his uh, approval guidelines and he started getting better tenants and then his stress level went down. Because when you are a landlord and you own a house, when you give those keys to a tenant and you give them to a yard bird, like someone he had someone in there who used to like to have parties and the neighbors were consistently complaining because they would have parties and they would be blocking off the street and there would be all these baby kids running around because this person would literally have a party every week that people be on the front smoking uh smoking weed drinking 40s and you know the neighborhood didn't like that and they, you know, they can they they complain to the tenant, but they also complain to the landlord. And he was like, every Monday he would get 30, 40 phone calls. There ain't nothing passive about that. There's nothing passive about that. And you have all these people thinking that real estate is passive, renting cars is passive, and it's not. It's not. So my message to you is you want to get to the point where you could create a business and you create systems and processes that reduce you from working like uh, this this year I've not worked 40 hours a week uh, I've been sick a lot I had other things going on and the when the book really took off I was working maybe maybe four or five hours a week and that went on for about two years so I've been constantly in a position where I've not had to work a 40, 50, 60, 70. I, I don't even know if I can work a 70, 80 hour work week. I have no clue because I haven't done it in years. Last time I was working those kind of hours, clocking those kind of hours, I was in the storage auction business. So what you want to get is a business 
that you can make, here, let me throw it out. You grew the business that you can make $100,000 a year, but you only work 20 hours a week. That's a big win because the point is you don't want to have a lot of money and have no time. Time is the luck, only luxury that we have, AKA bon Kanye West. He said that and I 100% agree with him. Uh, time. And this is one of the things I found out when I made all that money the first time that I had money freedom and time freedom and virtually everyone else I knew didn't until I started developing friendships with people who were in similar positions. Because like, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, and everyone's like, I wanna retire early. Okay, you retire 30 years old, you don't have anything going on, you're gonna lose your mind. Because you may retire at 30, but the majority of your friends and family are not retiring at 30. And the, when are you gonna have the birthday parties? On the weekend. When are you gonna have the cookout? On the weekend. Every, because this is one of the things I found out, because uh, I got into some other things that were kind of fun that I'm not gonna get into in the video, but one of the things I learned is like, you know, a situation like, um, my girlfriend, she, she actually has a lot going on. She's in school and I typically see her once or twice a week because she, even though I have time freedom in her busy life, she doesn't have the time freedom that I do. She doesn't have the time freedom. So today we're going to have a conversation on what I can do to help her get a little bit more time freedom because you know, and this is a conversation that's at my, I'm, I'm the one that brought up. She's never brought it up. She doesn't ask me for money. She, she's pretty much an extremely low maintenance girlfriend. She doesn't ask me for money. Um, other, I mean, she, she just doesn't ask for a lot, which I really appreciate and, and, and love her for. So I'm figuring out, all right, what can I do to get more time freedom where I can see her more? That's, this is at me, this, this is me. This is me saying, okay, what can I do for you to free you up? And I already have an ideal of what it's going to be. So probably do that where I, I would love to see her three to four days a week. And once again, this is me, this is not her. This is me. Because one of the things that um, people don't understand is, and you know, it is a bitch to be rich and be alone. And fortunately, that is not a position that I found myself in. I've seen people, I have friends who go through that. I got a friend right now who's 65 years old. He's worth 30 million. He lives in this big, beautiful house by himself with a pool. And you know what he started doing? He started buying a bunch of dogs. He's got like five dogs right now. You want to wake up those dogs because he was lonely. It is a bitch to be rich and have no one in your life. And that's where I feel that a lot of people are going to be because one of the things that I'm seeing is people don't have social skills. They just don't have the social skills. They don't have the communication skills. And this is something me and my girlfriend, we were talking about yesterday, like people who would be married for one year and get divorced. Did you even try? This is a common thing. You, you see people, like I was watching a per, paternity court and the number of women, this one woman slept with two men. And like, if you look at the window where a woman has sex with two men, it is a very, very short window for this to potentially be where both guys could be the father. It's, it, I mean, you don't have a lot of time to do that. I mean, this has got to happen at a specific time in a specific window. And, you know, uh, the, the, the guy who was taking care of the kid, who signed the birth certificate, who was seeing her, he had to go through all the bullshit because at one point he couldn't see the kid. He, he would see the kid and they would come to a park for four hours and then it matriculated to where he got overnights and then it matriculated to where he got weekends. And this guy was not the father. The other guy that she had slept with was the father and he wanted nothing to do with her. And this little girl lost a guy who wanted to be her dad. And th this is one of the things that 
you know, I'm probably going to start talking about my man's channel is no one actually talks about the loose pussy standards of these women who create these scenarios. It's like, you know, uh, there was a case of a grown man who was suing his presumed father and his father wasn't the father and no one had any shade for mom. And mom was 100% responsible for the situation and no one even talked about her, but it was mom. Mom was the one who was not handling her pussy correctly. And I'm just sitting there like, man, but yeah, you know, guys, I'm just saying, get ready. You're about to be hit over the head. You're about to be bombarded with all of these passive income scams and schemes, or once again, like I said, currently I have, I have online course sales, I have YouTube revenue and I have affiliate income. So I have three income streams. And when you, and I, I see these people talking about like seven, eight, as an entrepreneur, I know how hard it is to run one company, let alone run seven. And there's this girl on YouTube, she supposedly is running 26 companies. And I'm just sitting there like, I haven't really dived into it because I'm like 26 companies. If you have a team, I can understand. But as an individual running 26 companies, that's insane. I would never ever want to be in a situation where I'm running 26 companies. Uh, I'm just sitting there like, once again, I haven't dived into it because I sniff a little bullshit because I know how hard it is to maintain. Once again, starting a company is easy, but maintaining it and scaling it, those are the hard parts. Starting a company, like right now, there's so many people who are getting into trucking, who are getting the box trucking, starting, yeah, that's it. But making money and having longevity like I is documented proof. I've been making a lot of money for 13 years since I've been on YouTube documented proof. And the majority of these folks who are trying to sell you this bullshit, they ain't been in business one year, but they're supposed to make you all this money. So go ahead, watch the other video, the links in the first comment, and let me know your thoughts and opinions of that one as well. And I will see you guys in the next one.